Welcome to Charmed Life, a radio show discussing spirituality, magic, and the unconditional love of the universe. Thanks for tuning in. And I am your host, Trisha Carr. I'm not going to delay too much in my little intro today because, uh, well, it's just adorable. The person who's coming on and what we did today for you, well, we didn't know we were doing it, but let's welcome on spiritual teacher and intuitive channel, Chris Land Compton. And if you, this is the reason, like if you're listening to the podcast, you're going to have to go look at the video because... <laughs> <laughs> we both decided to sort of uh, bring forward our, our uh, glory days of the 90s yeah, and both 90s. wear adorable plaid shirts, uh, flannel type of shirts, I should say. <laughs> so, well, you look wonderful, I have oh, to say. You look wonderful. So well, pretty. Yeah. So pretty. Uh, love on each other for a minute. All right. So if you are new to Charmed Life, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. You can watch on YouTube, youtube.com slash Trisha Carr, the archives as well as the live stream. You can also watch on on Facebook and listen to the podcast on any podcast outlet by searching Charmed Life with Trisha Carr. And of course, you can watch live in the amazing Lightworkers Lab. The Lightworkers Lab is an online spiritual community hosted on Facebook, founded by this luminous being here on this show with me, Crystal Ann Compton. Crystal, what, what, the lab though, right? I mean, come on, the lab though. The lab is awesome. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. It's a wonderful spiritual community. We've been going for, ooh, almost, is it almost two or three years? I always forget. It's almost it always three, I think. Well, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was like summer of 2016 is when you started it. And I joined That's in November of 2016. Right. It just seems like a lot longer than that. It's mm -hmm. a wonderful spiritual community filled with lots of wonderful seekers. And it's a fun time. Always mm -hmm. something going on in the lab. <laughs> there is. <laughs> And it is a space of free resources. There, it's a space of education. It's a platform for education, spiritual expression. It has very, very specific, intentional uh, community, and the the specificity of it is just love, y'all. Always love, and no judgment. Mm -hmm. You are where you are, and it's perfect to be there. We support it. Yes, it's exciting to be wherever we are. Yes. Well, we also want to talk about let's 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 mention what this amazing program that we have coming up in yes. six weeks. It's actually, the registration is open now. Mm -hmm. The Intuitive Intensive, 2019 Intuitive Intensive, it's our second annual. Crystal, what do you think? What, what should folks know about the Intuitive Intensive? Well, the Intuitive Intensive is an intensive. It's called that for a reason. Mm -hmm. It is a comprehensive program designed to connect you to your innate intuitive abilities, and we all have them. But beyond that, to also just blast them wide open. And we take it from the foundation all the way up. We start with getting you to understand exactly who you are as a divine being and what it is you can do with your innate power. And we move from there through manifestation, through emissaries or spirit guides, into the mediumship, animal communication. The first eight weeks is going to be really comprehensive teaching, getting you all the information that you need to know. And the last four weeks is going to be hands-on coaching by Trisha Carr and myself to help you, again, to connect your abilities, but also to use those abilities to read for yourself, to read for situations, and to read for others. It is going to be a blast. It is a blast. I just love it so much. Last year when we did it, I shifted so much. You know, it's funny. Um, so I get eyelash extensions. I don't, I, I'm not ashamed. It's the same as mascara, only I don't have That's, to buy it. I, I get Botox. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, you know, uh, I wear makeup. I, I haven't had, I, I was thinking once, like, I, I haven't had any cosmetic work. Someone asked me, have you ever had cosmetic work done? And I was like, Oh, yeah, because I have my teeth straightened. So, yeah, that's cosmetic work. It's long and slow, <laughs> expensive as well. I did a misalign. Anyway, the point is, uh, last year when we did the intuitive intensive, the, I have to go back and, like, get my eyelash extensions redone, and it usually takes three weeks. But I had to come back, like, every seven days because I was shifting so much by teaching the program that my body is, like, you know, grow <laughs> my hair was growing and everything was growing really fast. And my my uh, friend who is my lash technician, she was like, she was like, you know what? People are always asking me how they can grow their eyelashes with a serum or something, but I'm just going to tell them to do an energy healing. <laughs> The energy do the, is powerful. It's do the intuitive powerful. intensive if you want better eyelashes. <laughs> there you go. Better skin, better hair, better lashes. Yeah. Um, a very cheap way uh, to um, improve your uh, health. So anyway. Um, so, well, I, I also want to yeah. say that um, in last year's intensive, we had some students who came in just not even mm -hmm. knowing that they had any abilities and really just trying to check it out. And one year later, they are actually in their own spiritual businesses. They mm -hmm. are giving readings professionally. Not that that's the goal, but they became so confident in their own 
gifts and their talents that they're now sharing them and broadcasting them. So it's really fun. It's, it's wonderful to immerse yourself in the content, but also the potential of what you can do with these abilities is powerful as well. It is. And they're exactly there. It's really amazing. People who they'd never given a reading or even, even for themselves before, uh, you know, we have, we have a video of testimonial people who offered their testimony about how, what their experience was. And you can actually find it on my YouTube channel and on Crystal's YouTube channel, if you want to see that. And, um, the link for, to read more about it and register is here in the show notes, however you are watching or listening to this program. So we do welcome you to check it out. And welcome yes. you, for, again, for serious seekers only, but any level of development, any level of development, right. even if you are at a, at a higher tier, I would say, of practice. I mean, I learn something every time, even though, you know, we're the ones who are teaching it. So welcome right. to have a look at that, y'all. And today we want to talk about a hot topic so far, right. yeah, a hot topic in this kind of spiritual seekers community, in the light worker community, uh, con- higher consciousness community, m- metaphysics, mysticism. I- I'm saying all of these things, but I'm not saying new age because I really don't like that word. I don't, I've never liked it. Even when I was a kid and I first started hearing it, I didn't like it because I think it's actually a little bit pejorative because actually what we are, what we are looking into is an, an eternal kind of age, an innate truth of how energy functions and what humans are and what di- the divine is. And anyway, along those lines, whatever label you decide to put on it is Doreen Virtue and her, I guess it is sudden it's been going on for about two and a half, two years now, I think, that she right. started uh, doing an about face in her in her life and in her work, really, in her work, which she is putting out into the world. And there was a brand new list. This is Jan- or, excuse me, February of 2019, and she just, she just wrote an article called The A to Z List of New Age Practices to Avoid and Why. So Doreen Virtue, just to give you all some perspective in case you don't know who she is, she is a former New Age author and um, entrepreneur, business person. And she used to write books all about, well, there was one called The Lightworker's Way. There's all, all kinds of on angels and um, d- different, you know, what she is calling, what she deems as new age topics. And she was really quite a pioneer in it so far as the business side of it is concerned, wouldn't you say? Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And so far as it being, you know, being an author, she's, you know, if you're familiar with Hay House, she was definitely one of those big authors that Hay House published and made a lot of money with and for, which that's not pejorative at all when I say that. I just mean like as a business, she was very prolific in that realm. And so, I mean, I would put her in higher consciousness just because of for the business side of things as well. But anyway, essentially about two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, she claims to have had an awakening while going to a Christian church and she saw the real Jesus. And I'm paraphrasing, but this is pretty close to what she says, that she realized, she discovered that she had been following a false Jesus and that the real Jesus of Nazarene made himself apparent to her and explained this to her. The other thing that she says, just to give you the backstory, uh, as I have read on, I actually saw her giving a video about this. She said that, you know, she came up as, um, I mean, well, she's always said she came up as Christian science, which is a kind of metaphysical combination of Christianity. And, you know what I mean? Like they use a lot of the same kind of higher principle practices of meditation and they believe in energy healing and they believe in thoughts becoming things. So, you know, you see a lot of that, but it's also with the Christian kind of base. And so she, now it's interesting. She always, she says, I came up with new age thought. But she used to say when she was a new age business person, I came up as a Christian. And I think both perspectives are right because it's kind of a hybrid sort of practice. Right. And so now she, she says that she used to say all the time, even when she was, when she was still a new age author, I'm a Christian. And I was like, that's fine. That's great. But then when she had her about face, one of the things she said was, I had never read the Bible before. I didn't read the Bible until I started making these oracle cards called the words of Jesus and loving loving words of Jesus. And when I heard her say that, I was like, you never read the Bible before, but you claim to be a part of that faith that is based upon that book. And that always, that gave me pause when I first heard that. Like that's, I wouldn't call myself Muslim if I'd never read the the Quran, (laughs) you know? Right, right. Totally. Yes. 
absolutely. And so fast forward, well, I actually talked about this when it sort of came out about a year and a half or two years ago. I can't remember exactly when. And I talked about it in the lab because a lot of people started to panic. They had certifications from her and, you know, to be an angel card reader and whatever else. And so I, I addressed it in the lab at that time. And I said, well, look, you know, if it's actually panicking you that much, I think that maybe it's time to look at whether or not you are clinging to those certifications too much, regardless of where they came from. Because if UCLA burned to the ground, does that mean you can no longer be a scholar because you have a degree from UCLA? No, your scholarship is more than than that. And so I said, you know, maybe we look at that. But on the business side, on the practical side, if you feel like part of the reason you purchased that program was because you were promised a certification that would support your business for the rest of your life, then yeah, maybe ask for a refund. But that's a totally different thing than as to whether it actually certifies or verifies you as a healer or a teacher or a minister. Anyway, so here we are now with this A to Z list. And Crystal, you actually did put up a video in responding to this last week. And... What do you what do you what are your thoughts about this on the surface? My thoughts are that it's it's actually pretty easy. If if you have your own spiritual compass, then that means you can at least probably read energy. To be spiritually connected means to be connected to the divine or to the source of all things. And and really what that is is you can call that God, you can call that creator, you can call that whatever, but it's really love and it's an energy. And when you come across a person or you come across content like uh, that article and you read it, you can feel whether that's in alignment with this divine energy or with love energy or with God energy. And if it is inducing fear within you, or if all of a sudden you're getting afraid because, oh my gosh, I, I love unicorns, which is on our list of things that are <laughs> going to make you go to hell or, or however she phrased it, or crystals or Reiki, and you realize, oh my gosh, I partake in those things, and now I'm struck with fear, then that's your first sign that what you're looking at, what you're contemplating, might not be in alignment with source energy or with creator energy. So I think that for the spiritual seekers out there, it's really important to understand that the fear itself is your first indication that something is amiss, and second, that you can trust yourself to be able to discern whether something is true or whether something is false based on your own compass. It's a great opportunity, I think, actually, yeah. for spiritual seekers to learn how to trust themselves and to not be swayed so much by personalities, by dogmas, or by systems. In fact, go within because your internal compass is always going to tell you right from wrong. And that's a judgment, but it's always going to tell you love from not love. Mm -hmm. And the farthest thing away from love is, is fear, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So. And the, the truth of the matter is that that is how nature works. We see that, that yeah. that's, what, that's what nature has. Its, every element of nature has its own compass. And the love or the life force energy is what contributes to its development as well as allows it to contribute to the ecosystem. And then its retraction or its... The, the the lack of life force energy, which would be fear or something uh, something that is separation oriented, is going to deteriorate it and separate it from its giving to the ecosystem in a healthy way. So, I, I mean, it's kind of that simple. But the, what is interesting is, well, so Doreen, uh, by the way, we want to preface this, even though we've started talking about it. This absolutely, we love Doreen because she's a yes. person, she's a sister, and she actually did do, we are both in businesses that she laid some trail for. So acknowledging that and also acknowledging the fact that maybe in a week she's going to turn turn around again and repent and say, I, I no longer am Christian. That's okay. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of bravery in doing this kind of stuff. So on the light side of things, we just want to say that this isn't meant to tear anyone down. And if I read an article from Doreen tomorrow, I may actually find some, and reading this, there's some things in it where I'm like, yeah, I, I, I hear you. I feel you. You know what I mean? So this, everyone is dynamic. No one is statically one way or another. And we're just looking at this because it, it's kind of a big statement and a lot of people are asking us about it. <laughs> so that's, yeah. why we, that's why we're talking about it. <laughs> Absolutely. And when she first came out and she talked about her conversion, mm -hmm. um, and, and I explained this in my video from last week, it was kind of a gentle, it wasn't, um, 
it, it wasn't harsh. The energy didn't feel so fear-based and uh, I respect anybody's path. And I think that this can be in divine order too. And everything that she's experiencing is because she's probably supposed to be experiencing it. And so I have nothing but love and blessings for her. But um, I just, uh, I, but where I get concerned is where I see our community, our spiritual community wobbling mm -hmm. and questioning whether what they are doing is the right thing and, and looking at how they're reacting to it. And even just right before I got up in this podcast, I got up in the Lightworkers Lab and I said, hey, I'm going to be on this podcast. And we had people right there in that stream saying, I'm just afraid. I'm afraid yeah. um, because I am Christian. I'm afraid to step outside of Christianity. And now this comes and, and what am I supposed to do? And oh. uh, it's, yeah, so it's a little concerning as teachers and as people who are in this particular field as well. I actually, there are a couple of things I want to talk about. First, just to preface, let's talk just to, just to put everything in context, yeah. Christianity was created in 325 BC and right. actually started, it started its, its inception basically started just a little bit before that by Constantine the Great, who was an emperor, a Roman emperor. And he previously, previous to that was in like the sun god, kind of Sumerian god um, religion and essentially be Christianized the sun god religion. And this is why the Church of Rome has some similar kinds of, um, I want to say, symbolism to that ancient religion. In 325, the first Council of Nicaea, which was organized by Constantine, this is a, a council that actually created the canon of what we now edited and curated the books that we now see as the Bible. Now, so what is 325 AD? AD, we kind of say, it stands for after death. It's Three, it's the date from when Jesus was thought to have passed away. <laughs> or is it his life, the beginning of his life or at the, at the end of his life? I think it says at the end of his life. It's a 33 year. Yeah, I think it's at the end. Yeah, okay. So anyway, that basically, that's 325 years after Jesus lived on the planet. Mm -hmm. So again, it was curated and edited. Those books were edited by men, by people, it, you know, by, I, you could kind of say by businessmen. Politicians, yeah. Politicians mm -hmm. and businessmen. Mm -hmm. And so just let's put it in context. Jesus wasn't Christian. <laughs> let's just right. say it, right? <laughs> right. Not at all. He was a Jew. <laughs> right. And now let's let's also then just loosen up a little bit about all of that and just recognize that doesn't mean that it's not a valid religion either. Every Anything can be used. Bashar was on my, or Daryl Anka was on my channel two weeks ago, and he's, Bashar always talks about permission slips. Any tool, any religion, any practice, including the ones that Doreen lists in here, they in of themselves are neutral. It is right. you entirely again. It's you. And anything can be helpful to you if it is orienting you to that love or life force energy. So let's just talk about that first of all, or let's mention that. Mm -hmm. And that is not to that is not to deny anyone. It's just historical fact. That is that is not a, an opinion. It is just historical fact. Yes. And so one thing I want to I want to mention is what a spiritual teacher is. So this is one thing that I took I take away as I'm reading this article of Doreen's, and kind of in general. So to me, a spiritual teacher is both a scholar and a minister. A teacher is a scholar, and a, what a scholar means is someone who has well acquainted themselves with the philosophies and the works that are produced around those topics, but also contributes, also contributes new or at least um, a, a kind of expanded perspective in some way. So that's a scholar, and that's what a teacher does in general. And a spiritual teacher then is also a minister. And so a minister is someone who helps someone to hold space for them so that they can connect with their own divinity to be able to be a better person for themselves and everyone else. And what we also know about this is, scientifically speaking, negative reinforcement doesn't work. It is not sustainable. Positive reinforcement is actually what works so far as coaching, managing, supporting other people. We, it's social psychology has been telling us that for decades now. So, again, just from the perspective of it doesn't even have to be like spiritual. It just scientifically it doesn't make any sense to frighten someone into something that is better for them. It does not work. Right. Well, I mean, if you look at religion in general, orthodoxy has been using that tactic, though, for, you know, millennia. Mm -hmm. They've been 
using hell, they've been using punishments, they've been using the inquisition, they've been using this negative reinforcement to keep people in line and to keep people, I think, frightened from exploring on their own what that spiritual connection ought to look like. So, I mean, in, in, in one sense, it does work, but in the other sense, it's not authentic. It's not really fostering what we're really talking about here, which is an understanding and a relationship with God. It doesn't it, sustain, it's not sustainable for creating right. connection. Yes, yes. It actually creates more fear, and it, and it, and it, it is, um, fear is, is, again, scientifically, we can see that fear actually, using biofeedback, actually shuts down the life force. It actually creates illness, and it creates disease. Right, and, and I think... That's what I really don't like about what Doreen is doing with this article and just the direction that she's going. I think she's um, gone back, well, not gone back into because Christian science is not fundamentalism, but I think now she's in fundamentalist she evangelical is, Christianity, like that literalist interpretation of everything in the Bible is absolutely true. Anything that deviates is sin and you're going to hell. I, that's what I really, I, I don't, and I also don't understand, and maybe Trisha, we can talk about this. Like, How do you come from an enlightened space about reality or an enlightened space about consciousness, which I, I think from some of her books and some of her work, I mean, I had the impression that she had this expanded consciousness. How do you go from that into this sort of boxed in cage like reality to me? I mean, because we, you and I both started from evangelicalism and I started from straight up fundamentalism. I'm no more scriptures than I can shake a stick at. I memorized them as a child. <laughs> I can't go back there because I've experienced too much truth, too much expansion, too much understanding. And it just, I wouldn't ever be able to reconcile the two. So how is it, do you think, that she's been able to go there from where she allegedly was in terms of her consciousness? Maybe she, was she, was she ever there? Maybe that's the question. I don't know. Well, you know, it's interesting this it every as i read her article here it's funny the things that show up for me most are me me the first thing i'm seeing is comparing it to the actual bible and saying well that's not biblical that's not biblical so the first thing i want to say in answer to that is no one knows the heart of a man and so i can't say for not and not and I'm, obviously you're not either we're talking about the fruits but judging by the fruits so now judging by the fruits which many of which are her very own words I mean, this is going to sound judgmental, but the best word I can think of is dilettante. And a dilettante is someone who is sort of like just cursory, not really, again, not a real scholar, not, a, not deeply in the full occupancy of whatever it is that they are practicing. And this, again, I take from that one video of hers where she was explaining her conversion. And she said that, you know, she... The way she mapped it out, I grew up Christian, but it was, you know, Christian science, again, not fundamentalism. And then when I started to get exposed to the New Age world, I found it all very exotic with the crystals and the everything and the, and the energy healing. And I was just, I was dazzled by it. And then, essentially, I think that she, it, that's kind of where she left off. It's almost as the signs and wonders. She got, she left right. off at that. And then she had never read the Bible. She didn't really know about Christianity. So then when she started to go to church because she and or read the Bible, she got dazzled because that seemed very, again, exotic to her. So I think it's very much the same thing. And I, I want to say she's kind of a, again, I hate to say it because I don't want to be judgmental, but it is a kind of a dilettantism. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to, and I'm going to say something just again to put it in context I think Doreen Virtue, so far as spirituality is concerned on uh, whichever part that she is doing as a business or as a speaker, I feel like she's the Madonna, <laughs> meaning like not, not the holy Madonna. I mean, right. Madonna, the singer and business person. Madonna right. is and that's not that is not an insult because Madonna is phenomenal at some things at singing. Maybe not so much, right? right. <laughs> like it's good enough, better than right. I can. I can't record an album right now. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like, so as a musician and as a singer, Madonna has what she has and is as good as she is. But as a business person, she's pretty great at going with the with the title and actually even leading the tide in a lot of ways. So that's what I think about it. That's, again, judging by the fruits or discerning by what I, the products are. That's what makes sense to me logically. Right. <clears throat> it makes sense to also wonder whether this is all kind of, I mean, yeah. I, I, we, all, we, we always want to preface with we're not judging, but we are asking real questions. Like, yeah. is this kind of like a money grab? And, you know, there were our new up and coming 
teachers in the metaphysical and spiritual community. And maybe she felt like she was cycling out of this particular community in terms of popularity and otherwise. And so maybe she moved to another religious or spiritual community that she could avail herself of. I don't know. That seems... Um, that's uh, superficial to say the least wicked to say the most it doesn't it just seems bad i really never followed doreen too strongly i've got a couple of her oracle card decks i'm not going to get rid of them if i like them that's because i've put my energy into them but i really um i i, I can't really comment on what her motivations are I, I can only comment on what i see as the result of what she is doing and i don't like it and it just bothers me deeply bothers me deeply that anybody in any system can tell somebody else about the quality of their soul mm. and can tell somebody else about the trajectory of their soul. You're going to hell. Really? How do you know that? First Samuel says that only God knows the heart of a man, that we see the outward. We don't see the inward. So who are you, who are you to tell me that because I have Reiki sessions or because I like unicorns, okay? I like unicorns, mm. that I am on a path into witchcraft, not that there's anything wrong with that, or that I am on a path to hell. Who gave you that God mouthpiece? That's so presumptuous and arrogant of me. Now, I can guess, having come out of come, come out of fundamentalist fundamentalism myself, that she's doing it because she feels she has to, giving her the most benefit of the doubt. She feels that she's got to go and, and spread the gospel to the world, and she's got to tell people the error of their way. She feels that there's a mandate to do that, but it's so... It's so disturbing to me. People who find that they have to proselytize mm. or tell other people that they're doing it wrong. It's just inherently not spiritual to me. It's inherently non-God to me, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And you know what? Even in, in the Christian church, the ministers who were who really shifted, helped me to shift the most, helped me to feel the most, more of my divinity, didn't do that either. They didn't say, you're going to hell, you're going to hell, and this is how you go to hell. They weren't doing that kind of surface thing. Again, I think it's stopping at something that is very superficial and not really going down into loving humanity. Well, Christ said that, Jesus said that, you know, real, real, um, you know, what is it, feeding the orphans and the widows? What, what is it? Uh, real love, or I'm, I'm totally paraphrasing because I've forgotten my Bible verses. But, you know, that's true religion. That is true um, humanity, and that is true divinity, is to actually love someone. That I love that you, you put that on your YouTube channel. No, no uh, negative comments or whatever will be tolerated. Get in the pit and try and love someone. That's what's really hard. That's the, that's the hard work of being a human. Right. And um, lest you forget, it was Jesus himself who at the age of 13 was taking the priests to school. Mm -hmm. He was taking the system to school. He was like, you lack love. Mm. You, you know the letter of the law and what the letter of the law says, and you can condemn people by the letter of the law, but you lack love. And he was doing this with Nicodemus. He was doing this with everybody. He was a rebel. He was eating that, was it wheat on, on the Sabbath? He mm -hmm. didn't, he, he flouted th that kind of thing. And I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's, it, it's antichrist to me. It, the it spirit really is. of this kind of thing is antichrist to me. And I don't understand how for someone who p was out of it to go into that space, how that person wouldn't recognize it as such, unless they don't care. Again, this is allegedly, I don't know the woman, um, unless they don't care, but I just want, I want the seekers out there. Again, this is a, this is an invitation to trust yourself. This is an, an invitation to read the energy. How'd you feel when you read mm -hmm. that article? Mm -hmm. How'd you feel when you felt condemned? Did it feel good? Did it feel light? Did it feel like love? No, well, then that's your first clue that what you're looking at isn't in alignment with what you should be pursuing, as far as I'm concerned, as a spiritual seeker. So let's talk a little bit about it. I have the article pulled up right here. And again, when I read it, it's, it's interesting. The one thing that I think is that she is sort of a persuasive writer, but I only, I say sort of because I'm not persuaded. I actually see a lot of, I actually see a lot of bad writing, but to someone who is maybe in a more vulnerable position, it would be persuasive, which 
is actually, you know, I would say that's quite unethical then. Someone who feels already worried and fearful can be easily yes. persuaded. It's tapping into those those little areas. Oh, oh, the yeah, one thing I wanted to say was maybe we should pull up Jesus's list of A to Z New Age practices to avoid and why. Oh, oh, that's right. He didn't write anything like that. Right. Um, right. So, <laughs> sorry, I had to be a little sarcastic. That's on the okay. list too, sarcasm. <laughs> it's going to send you to hell. Uh, <laughs> So the new this is this is the article. I'm just going to read a couple of paragraphs because the first paragraphs are really interesting. The new age promises secret and hidden wisdom, healing, higher self-esteem, love, financial success and inner peace. All right, right there first of all, secret and hidden wisdom. I don't promise secret wisdom. I say it's all apparent. That's what I that's how I understand it. And I, I get but maybe she's not talking to me because I think new age is actually kind of a pejorative, pejorative way to refer to higher consciousness or, you know, the spirituality that we practice. New Age teaches that we are all little gods. Where have I heard that before, though, Crystal? Oh, I think that was Jesus. I think, yeah, a, a man named Jesus. Yeah. yeah, that was Jesus. <laughs> you, you are all gods. So mm -hmm. anyway, that we are all little gods who can manifest whatever or and whomever we want. The reality, however, is that you never arrive at the point of true and lasting happiness, so you keep addictively seeking and searching I find that interesting, too, because that's actually something that I experienced in Christian religion. The, you never find lasting happiness because the way that a lot of times the, the dogmatic religions are set up is that you're never enough. The authority is outside of you. You see? Right. Well, mm -hmm. and you were born into your life already a sinner because of original sin, and so mm -hmm. you have to repent. And so, yeah, you're never good enough. Yeah. So, again... I, I just, I see, I can see it. Yes, it can be true. Absolutely. In this community of higher consciousness or spiritual seeking. Yes, I do see that that is because that is a tendency of humanity to be, have sort of addiction or a destination addiction. And I, I think that can be, that comes out in whatever filter, whether it, whatever belief system that you're curating for yourself, that can be there. We have found, this is back to the article, we have found that many people who are unaware that they're involved with spiritually dangerous New Age practices. We understand because the same thing happened to us. We made this list to help you identify and avoid the deceptive practices. We wish someone would have made a similar list to us. We're not, this is what I love, we're not being negative or fear-based with this list. We're also not hating on anyone or judging anyone. In fact, it would be hateful of us not to outline the dangers. We love you. Okay. That's that paragraph, the very next paragraph. Someday, everyone will learn the truth. The devil runs the new age. Oh, she just, I mean, it's just funny. And that's like, she's telling jokes, right? Some people will discover that, the, some people will discover this truth while in hell, where it's too late for those regrets. And I, that just breaks my heart that she just, that this article just says that right to people's faces. Yeah. That's sad. Mm -hmm. It is. And at one time, we didn't believe in the existence of demons or the devil, but we found out the hard way that they're real. We aren't afraid of demons, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's the thing. Let's talk about demons and the devil, Crystal. Okay. Um, this is on her on her list. There's a lot of things she's talking about. Well, this, this is run by demons, and that is run by devils. And you know what? I would say that, again, from, the pers from just a very open perspective, that yes, any, again, any practice, any tool can welcome in negative energy. It has to do with your energy and your intention. Yes. And so Correct. we, the New Age, she, she says here a few times, like the New Age doesn't believe in demons or whatever. And I guess, again, I'm not New Age because I do believe in negative entities. I know they exist because you know what? There are negative humans walking around or there are people who behave negatively and harm one another, including me. I've harmed myself and I've harmed others. And that would be something that, would be demonic, I guess. You know, I hate that word because it has so much laden upon it. But right. yeah, the negative entities are available. And if you're entering into practices of channeling and mediumship, you are just as vulnerable to those, to negative entities coming into your space as you are going out into the world and dating, quite frankly, and, and having yeah. human physical interactions with people. Right. And so what do, what do you think about this whole idea of you know, demons and the devil. I mean, I think the devil maybe is really our, is the human ego and it's just fear. It's just the concept of fear. I think it's cartoonish and mm -hmm. mythological and it's pablum. Mm -hmm. I think it's an easy way to just paint um, 
a, a form of existence in a broad stroke to make people afraid of it. You're talking about negative entities. We can call this demonic. We could have a long conversation about whether demons exist. Um, uh, I think that there are patterns of energy that are absolutely antithetical to source energy. We could call these demonic. Are we talking about actual mythological demons? I mean, it's a whole, I think she's using this as a fear tactic mm -hmm. for people who are unsure in their spirituality. And again, it's cartoonish. Mm -hmm. It's cartoonish. It's a big boogeyman in your closet or sleeping under your bed. And this is what's going to get you if you don't do what I'm saying is the right thing to do. Yes. So some of the things on the list affirmations without God. I mean, I don't really understand what that would be. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Again, I don't think she understands any of the prints. I don't think she understands the literature that is the Bible. And I also don't think that the way that these things are being presented are the, the way that they're actually utilized in a be beneficial sense. So it's, again, kind of just persuasive writing. Because an yeah. affirmation means to affirm something positive about yourself, something that is true and positive as, oppo as opposed to something that is oriented to your low self-esteem and untrue about yourself. So God being a perfect parent would always be the affirm affirmation of the truth of who you are. So I just don't even, yes. these just over and over, like I almost don't even know how to, <laughs> it's just so simple. Well, I mean, wouldn't you want your own child yes. to feel good about themselves, to feel confident about their abilities? Wouldn't you want your own child to have that for themselves. And Jesus spoke about this and said, if you as a parent know how to give good gifts to your own mm -hmm. kids, how much more does your father in heaven want to give you good gifts and know what these good gifts are? Mm -hmm. So it just doesn't make any sense. It, I'm reacting. I know me too, because <laughs> it, it's so it's, funny. <laughs> we're so perfect. We're such slow the ones to look at this. Cause again, it just keeps drawing me back to the Bible and say, no, but the Bible said this. <laughs> Which I is know, funny. I can't, I can't, there's, yeah. But anyway, that's just the first one. So no affirmations without God right in there. So what is an affirmation about God? Just the Jesus. Uh, go ahead. She says, avoid affirmation, positive affirmations that only glorify yourself, i.e. I am a wonderful person and instead use affirmations that glorify God based upon Bible verses. Self-glory is hollow, like eating junk food. Giving glory to yourself won't increase your happiness, confidence, or self-esteem. Only praising God, only by praising God will you find the joy, peace you seek. Don't you believe this? Try saying, thank you, God, repeatedly, and notice how you feel. Then keep going with praising God. God doesn't need us to praise him. Oh, good. He doesn't have an ego, but we need to praise God for our own benefit. And that's just a lot of circular logic. Again, I'm, now I'm going to pick apart the writing because it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. So again, if we just think of God as the perfect parent, do, do you want your child to, it, it, do you think your child will be um, more enhanced by just continually praising the parent? Or wouldn't the perfect parent want you to understand who you are truthfully though? And because this is, she's basically saying that affirmations have the tendency to enhance our arrogance, but that again, then it's just not an affirmation. That's all. Right. Right. And, and as a parent, you want your child to be able to go out into the world and succeed. And in order to do that, they have to know who they are and what their gifts and their talents are. So you want them to identify that within themselves. And yeah. So it, it doesn't make much sense. The next one is aliens. The fascination with other life forms can open you to demons pretending to be aliens and can also distract you from your godly purpose. Um, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. That's absolutely pos possible. And that again, it has to do with your intention. And again, aliens or e or benevolent ETs or just other planetary consciousnesses or beings, they kind of aren't any different than people. You know what I mean? Like you can get involved with a person and that can distract you from being the better version of yourself and serving the world in your highest form. Or you can get involved with a person who is able to be a, a good mentor or at least a good partner, you know what I mean? Like, and help you to expand yeah. who you truly are in the divine um, perspective. Yeah. Correct. I right. do. And I think what's interesting is that when it's that signs and wonders thing again, you know, when mm -hmm. we get afraid of something because of how, what it is like as a tool, we're kind of stuck at the signs and wonders. When we get overly fascinated with something so much so that we give our sovereignty to it, like if we get obsessed with ETs or 
to where we deny our humanity, the physical humanity of ourselves or the divinity in our physical humanity saying, I'm a starseed who doesn't belong here. I mean, that happens in uh, the spiritual seeking community. I don't belong here and I need to be taken away and I deny myself and I want to astral project all the time or whatever because she talks about astral projecting too. Yes, of course, all of these things can be used to enhance the things about you that, that are not truly you. It's interesting that she starts with the affirmations because truly the antidote to all of these other things that can be a slippery slope and that can get you into a bit of trouble, the antidote to that is to know exactly who it is that you are mm -hmm. as a divine being and to be confident in that and to be fearless in that. When you are running your divine energy, your I am energy, if you will, your, your um, oversoul energy, you don't have to worry about these demons or these aliens interloping into your interactions or into your spaces because you're running too high of a vibration. So she kind of starts with, don't get too full of yourself. Don't, don't be too proud of yourself. Don't be too arrogant. Don't know yourself as who, as who you truly are. And then she moves into all these other things that are half truths because yes, some of these things can be a little sticky, but if you know who you are, then you're not going to get stuck there. One of the ones on her list, I'm skipping forward a little bit, is divination. The attempt to obtain knowledge of the future so that you can be reassured. Well, first of all, Again, she doesn't understand the tool or it's not being properly represented here because divination isn't just about the future. And I think she says that about astrology and numerology too, that it has to do with predicting the future. That is not necessarily the point of it. It is about, again, bringing you back to your true divinity. The Bible strictly forbids fortune telling and instructs us to trust God with our fortune. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Crystal, do you remember something called Urim and Thummim? Yes. I'm yes. sorry. You're cutting up a little. Can you say that again, though? Oh, sorry. Um, okay. Chris, uh, she's talking about, Doreen's talking about divination and right. that these tool, tools are strictly forbidden. And I said, do you remember Urim and Thummim from, she, yes. and, and she actually references a, a Deuteronomy verse, not in this particular list right now, about why cards and other kinds of divination tools are forbidden. But in Exodus, which is right next to Deuteronomy, the priests used Urim and Thummim. Now, we don't know exactly what this was, but this was, um, the priests used this to help to di essentially divine instruction from God. It seemed like something maybe it was like runes or maybe dice or something along those lines. It's not specifically explained, but they did cast yep. the Urim and Thummim to be able to, to divine what the right direction was from God. And they had to trust in their own divine energy in order to connect with it. So if you're going to source an Old Testament verse about why it is forbidden, then you also have to take into context the, an Old Testament verse where it was literally used by priests. Right. Well, what about Samuel as well? When he was choosing who was going to be the successor to Saul, he pulled out his pouch of stones, right? And he cast them and that's how he found David or that's how he selected David um, or knew that David was the one because I think David was shepherding at the time. But yeah, you have incidents of divination throughout the Bible. Absolutely. And of and course, it's yeah. cherry picking. It's cherry picking. Obviously, there are so many things in Deuteronomy, Leviticus and Exodus that are antiquated and do not apply yes. culturally, of course. So why are you picking that and not the other thing? doesn't make any sense. And then she ha we have here energy healing, the belief that a person can be a conduit for universal energy, and the universal energy is in quotes, through the right. use of symbols in their hands. This is a spiritual equivalent to opening your front door and inviting in random strangers into your home. Of course, we see that Jesus was an energy healer. Not Maybe it's not her mm -hmm. particular brand of Christianity, but of course, you and I both were in Christian churches that did the laying on of hands. And, you know, prayer Absolutely. is a kind of energy healing. We pray for others and then we see that they are healed. And that works, by the way, in Christianity and outside of Christianity. It really does work. So, again, just like kind of using using words to and then putting it through a negative filter is just what I mean. There's almost not a lot more to, to say about this because it just keeps going over where it's just kind of like shaping some words in a way that will conjure some fear in someone. And That's right. And I can, we can just probably go through most of this and either see how there is, of course, it just has to do with how you use the tool, or it was literally, it's still in this canon of the Bible that it was used. Right. right. It just gets more and more absurd as you, you read the list. So what is the takeaway? Yeah, uh, right. I know. For this, like, what, what do we... Well, what do you uh, think it is? 
Well, it's what I said at the very beginning. I think it's a great opportunity for spiritual people to use their own discernment. It's really a great opportunity to trust what you know to be true within yourself. It's a great opportunity to learn what sovereignty is and that you are entitled to have your own spiritual experience. I think there's a proverb and I, and I, I don't know exactly what it says, but it's, we're all going to the same place. We're all on our path up the mountain to get to the same destination. The one wasting time is the one running around the mountain telling everybody else you're going the wrong way. You know, it's just, that's what this seems to be. And so I think if we can take away anything from this is to trust yourself and to know yourself. And if you, if you're feeling fear, that might be an invitation for you to learn more about your own divinity. Jesus Christ said, if you can, if you believe it's possible to him that believeth all things are possible. Jesus said this. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said that we were miraculous beings. Jesus said, if we said to that mountain, jump into the sea, it would have to do so. If we had the requisite faith and we could have this faith, Jesus upon performing miracles said greater things than I have done. Will you do? Jesus was emblematic for this type of power and this type of fearlessness and I think that's what this shadow aspect is showing. It reflects us. It it points us to the light where we need to be. And fear is just an energy. Fear is just a vibration. And it's really, again, that clue that we need to get back into alignment. It's okay to find your own way. It's okay to exit a system that no longer works for you. I want to embolden people to do that. And Mm -hmm. I want to acknowledge as well, when you first start to exit any system, Christianity is just one of them. It's frightening. It's frightening because you fear the great apostasy. Mm -hmm. You fear backsliding. You fear that you're being deceived. And yet how brave to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. How brave to get in the pit with God and reason it out and look with your brain, look with your heart to see what's really true. I mean, I think that's brave. And I think this is a call for more of us to do that. Yes. Amen. It's nice. That's Amen. what we need to do. And you know, I, I want to say that fear is never correct. It is never accurate. Ever. Even, it never is. Because if God is going to give you a message to caution you, God gives it to you lovingly. Take the model of a, a very a very um, useful tool that people use in psychology or, you know, to be able to help someone who's going down a negative path like of, of addiction, the intervention. The intervention is successful because people come together in the way that God said, come, let us reason together. So let, let's reason together. They aren't scaring the person. They're saying, look at how this is impacting my life. Look at how is it impacting your life. Now, let's reason together. Do we want to shift this? That's how the intervention works. So that is helping someone to change their ways, to shift onto a path that is going to serve them better. It isn't done by scaring them. The scared straight thing does not work. Again, negative reinforcement doesn't work. It doesn't work in you. So anytime you feel fear, that's off. That is not going to scare you back into love. You can't be scared into love. That doesn't make any sense. You just identify, you just become love, which is your true essence, or you're not in that moment. That's it. And so it's never, it's never a source of information. It's always a source. Fear is always a source of separation and it never works. Yes, correct. And it, and I think when she starts her article and she says, I'm not trying to be fear-based. And in the very next paragraph, she says, but there's devils and demons out there and we don't want you to encounter them. And, you know, and, or, and you'll find or, out in hell if you don't find out now. Yeah. I mean, it's right there. It's plain as day. That's uh, paradoxical. That's a lie. That's just a lie. It is fear-inducing. She knows it. I believe she knows it's fear-inducing. That's my opinion. She must know that it's fear-inducing. And we have to question the motive as to why she would do that. It's it, when you look at it and you break it down in this way, just looking at the words, as you say, it's pretty clear to well, me at least. And I think, again, we can bring it back to the fact that she is identified with fear. She is fearful. She is scared. I think so too. I think she's afraid. And yeah. I think if you look at her life and you look at the choices that she made, I think there's a lot of fear there. And uh, that th- might be fear of mortality. We're getting older. Constantine, you referenced him. He had a deathbed confession. He lived most of his life, not a Christian or the, there was no Christianity, but not a believer, if you will. And then on his deathbed, right? He converted, mm-hmm. I believe, mm-hmm. if I'm correct about that. So I think as we get older, um, we're less staunch in our opinions. You know, there are no atheists in Fox foxholes and we get a little afraid about our position. What if we're wrong? So that could be going on here with her a little bit too. 
And that's why I say it requires bravery. It yeah. really does. And it requires you being willing to connect with who it is that you truly are. And there's power there. There's power, power, wonder working power within yourself, within the I am of who you are. And that's where you have to start. And that's where it all ends as well. And that's what I, I said on my show last week. I said that, you know, as, as Jesus in the, in the Bible, it says, you know, I am the, tr the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except through me. I believe that Jesus is saying the I am is the way, the truth, and the life. Your I am is the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to God or the entire universe, source energy, unless they get through their, their own portal of God. And Jesus, yes. again, said, you are all gods. That energy, I, I don't... It, it, it just can't be, it cannot be logically sorted out. And that's, it's, its purpose isn't to be logical. Its purpose is to shake you up and in, in fear. And I'm not saying that she's tr necessarily, I think she is in fear. And so that's why fear begets fear, you know, until you bravely identify with love again. And it's interesting because it takes bravery to identify with love and yet it doesn't. It's just being home. Right. It is, it's who you actually are. You might have to peel away some layers to get there. And, you know, as we close here shortly, I just want to, um, even though I got reactive and I think a lot of that is because we've got echoes of that fundamentalism yeah. within us and, and I chafe, I chafe against that, but I, I kind of want to say again that I believe she probably wrote this into her blueprint when she came into this yeah. life, man, she's shaking up the spiritual communities. She's causing a lot of people to question, which I think is good. And I don't want to judge wherever she is. In fact, I want to bless wherever she is. It's okay to, to, to choose this path, to make these choices. It's okay. And um, I don't wish her ill at all. What I really want to do is throw some triage out there or to offer some hope and some light to those people who are struck by fear by this message. You don't have to be afraid. In fact, the call when you're afraid is to return to love. The most important spiritual practice that I have done lately, I'm going to share it with all of you. This is, this is the this is the most impactful, the most powerful spiritual practice I've done. And I'm, I'm, Crystal doesn't even know I'm going to share this right now. And so I want you all to pay attention. I want you all to take notes. This is the only practice that you ever need. And we're going to put it on the screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Is that con con? Yeah. <laughs> so for those of you who are listening... <laughs> We just put up a picture of one of my cats and my husband, and they're sitting in the exact same <laughs> posture. Uh, but I did. I took that picture because they looked so hilarious and adorable, and I laughed so hard. I laughed so hard as I watched them. I just felt so much love. I felt so much joy. And that is everything, love and joy, loving someone. And, and I, I loved myself for having that. You know what I mean? So that is the most spiritual thing I will do all day today. I have the show today. I'm going to be teaching a class later. That is the most spiritual thing I will do all day long. <laughs> I love it. Hey, the Bible says a merry heart does good like a medicine. And joy is another way to encounter God. So I love it. That's wonderful. Amen. Well, with that, we we are out of time, and uh, we just want to mention again, we welcome you to check out the Intuitive Intensive. The um, uh, link to check it out and to register is in the show notes. We actually have an early bird special at this time. For we, don't, we haven't said when that's going to end yet, but you know it will at some point, and it's already incredibly well-priced. It is, though, it is the resource that you, that you are contributing is your open heart and your interest to give yourself the space to be able to grow and change. So the 2019 Intuitive Intensive, Crystal Ann Compton and me, we are really excited to work with all of you. Anything else you would like to right. share, Crystal? No, just thank you for having me on your wonderful podcast. I just want to say hi to everybody in the Lightworkers Lab. I think this is a great conversation. I, I think we, we shouldn't be afraid to have these kind of controversial conversations. I think only good can come of it. So yes. thank you for having me. And so many blessings to Doreen Virtue. Just yes. a prayer in this moment that we do love her. And we love yes. all of the things that you've contributed to our lives in the positive way. And we see your light. And we see the, the interest. Like, I think the energy behind it is wanting to help others. Still somehow that is there. And I honor that. And I just pay attention to that and give my whole love and support to that. Me Amen. Too. So it is. Thank you much. Amen. Yes. And that'll do it for our show today. Thank you again, Crystal Ann Compton. You can find her. Her website is crystallinecompton.com and of course the lightworkerslab.com. Find the Lightworkers Lab on Facebook as a group. Join us and I will see you again next week. Thanks for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. Mm -hmm.